Hi everyone, welcome to the channel. I'm Josh with Survive First Contact and today we're going to be doing another medical video, kind of following the video I did previously on tourniquets. Now as a, a quick wrap up or recall what we did with tourniquets, I have one right here in my med pouch. Tourniquets are used to stop massive arterial bleeding on your extremities, your arms, your legs. So you remember from the last video, expose where the wound is, identify the wound, place direct pressure with your hand or something until you can get at your tourniquet, slide your tourniquet over the extremity, above the wound, closer to the heart, tighten it down and do your placement checks. Visually observe to see if the wound is still bleeding and take a pulse. If you have no pulse, you stop the bleeding. That's on your extremities, your arms, your legs. For lesser injuries that may occur on your extremities, your arms, your legs, or massive arterial bleeding that occurs somewhere where you can't get a tourniquet, say somewhere like your armpit, your ass pocket, or within your groin, you need to use a pressure bandage because you can't get a tourniquet above that and tighten it down uh, to stop the bleeding. So what a pressure bandage is doing, basically is you're filling that wound channel with gauze. And that wound channel being filled with gauze, if you think about it as a closed space, once you've packed enough gauze in there, it's going to put pressure on that bleeding artery and stop the bleeding. And once you have the wound fully packed with gauze, you're gonna take something like a, like a compression wrap and wrap around the wound to keep that gauze in place uh, to transport that, the person to higher care. So just like with our tourniquets, the first step in treating someone with a pressure bandage is identifying where the wound is. So getting the clothing off, cutting it away, doing what you have to do to visually see where the wound is. So take for example, it's in an armpit. So get the clothes off, cut the clothing away. I see an entrance wound or I see bleeding coming from somewhere. I don't know exactly where yet, but first thing I do, applying direct pressure to it because you don't want the injury to continue bleeding and have that person bleed out while you're messing around looking for your medical supplies. So you've exposed the wound, identified it, placed direct pressure with something like your hand. You can drop a knee on an injury as well. Whatever you have with you to place pressure while you then collect yourself and see what you need to do next. So you've applied direct pressure, you realize that it's in your armpit pocket, your ax pocket, you realize that you can't get a tourniquet up there, so your next step, ah, I need to go to a pressure dressing. So for your pressure dressing, even either going through, excuse me, going for the gauze in your kit or going for something like the Olay's bandage here from the Tactical Medical Solutions Company, and I'll talk a lot about this. I love this bandage, carried it overseas. It's a one-stop shop for pressure dressing pressure dressings, but we'll talk about that in a little bit. So going for gauze, either traditional gauze or something like here is combat gauze from Quick Clot. And why this is nice is this cloth gauze is impregnated with a clotting agent. So once you get this near the bleeding artery, this is going to help the clotting process and stop the bleeding. So identify the wound, apply direct pressure. You realize you need a pressure bandage going for your gauze. So like I said, either your individually wrapped gauze or gauze that comes inside your Olay's bandage, here it is unwrapped. So inside the Olay's bandage in this pocket here is gauze, and that's what's nice about this. So pressure maintained, grab your stuff, that's why it's critical to have your medical supplies within arm's reach, and some more you can manipulate it with one hand uh, because you don't want to pull pressure off of this. So I grab my Olay's bandage, undo the packaging, I have to work near the wound here if I want to use my other hand, I pull out my Olay's bandage. So I know that I have to pack a wound. I'm going for my gauze that's inside. So what I'm gonna do is pull the gauze out. What I'm gonna do is start packing that wound channel. Now I'm maintaining pressure on the wound and I constantly am replacing my hand with gauze as I am adding gauze to the wound channel. So I pack, I pack, and I pack. Packing that wound channel to apply pressure from the inside against that bleeding artery. So you get the idea from there. There's lots of gauze in here. So once I've packed and I filled that wound channel, um, good possibility that you don't completely fill the wound channel with one thing of gauze. So I recommend carrying something like combat gauze and then extra gauze. I've seen over half a dozen length of gauze go into something like an armpit or a groin pocket to fill, uh, to fill that pocket. You're going to need a lot. Um, so I've packed my wound channel. I have my gauze here. Next step is to cover it, and I cover it with compression wrap. Now I can either use like traditional uh, compression wrap, ace wrap, just like this one, or I can go to my Olay's bandage, my one-stop shop here, 
which has my wound covering on this side. And the nifty thing about this right here, it has a little plastic plate that when I wrap over that, it's going to apply pressure directly against what I want pressure on. So what I'm doing while maintaining pressure on my gauze uh, to keep my gauze in place, place my bandage over that wound where I want to cover it. Excuse me, I'm going to wrap up my, uh, my pouch here because I don't have another body part to wrap for you. Maintaining pressure down, the first wrap you're going to do with your ace wrap is what we call a securing wrap, meaning you're not going to go too tight with the first wrap because you want the first wrap to hold the bandage and hold pressure over the wound site. If you really crank on it and wrap too tight in that first wrap, you may move it, lose pressure on the wound, start bleeding again. So maintaining pressure, you get that first wrap, which is kind of loose, called your securing wrap. Once you have that first relatively loose wrap on there, you're going to do your compression wraps. And what we do with that, we're going to tighten on the up and down axis of the wound. So as I'm wrapping down this side and then up this side, I'm going to pull when I get on the down and up axes, and that's what's going to tighten it. What you're trying to do is apply pressure over the wound and cover the edges of the bandage so nothing else gets in there. So tighten on my down axis, wrap around, Tighten on my up axis, repeat the process until I've completely wrapped the wound, covering the edges of the bandage best I can. That last tight wrap coming down there. So on your traditional, something like your ace wrap, you're just going to have to tuck the running end into parts that you've already wrapped. The Olay's bandage here has these plastic clips on the edge, which you're going to clip uh, on the edge of the bandage. You can still just tuck it in to whatever is remaining if you want, but these clips are nice. You can tuck those clips into the edge of the bandage and keep it secure. Come on now. There we go. So there you have your applied pressure bandage. Just like a tourniquet, you do your placement check. Look further away from the heart, down the wound uh, to see if it's still bleeding. You can check a distal pulse. Um, if you have no pulse, you stop the bleeding. And another good sign of that, this is going to be tight like a drum. That's how you know that's a good tight pressure bandage and you have pressure on that bleeding artery that you applied through filling that wound channel. So that's pressure bandages. I'm gonna pull this off and then talk a little more about this Olay's bandage from the TACMED Solution Company. Now, I love these bandages, like I said before, because they're the one-stop shop. The guys over at Tactical Medical Solutions have really thought about it all when they designed this bandage uh, to be multifunctional, multi-purpose. And what I mean by that is a handful of things. Let's get this off here. One second here and we'll be done. Get my fake body part out of the way. So, cool things about the Olay's bandage. Uh, here's one packaged up. This is the four inch version. They make a six inch version. They also make a version that's more flattened out as it's packaged, so it'll fit nicely in your first aid kit. Um, as we saw, the Olay's bandage, when you unwrap it, it has a regular wound covering just like this. It has your gauze stuffed inside this pocket here, so you already have gauze readily available to pack your wounds. It has this plastic cup that as you wrap over it, it's applying direct pressure. And one of the things that's commonly overlooked with ACE wrap, um, the TACMED guys have added little lengths of Velcro every 12, every 12 inches, roughly, on this bandage. So as you're unrolling it, it catches on that Velcro. And why that's important, when your adrenaline's pumping and someone's bleeding out in front of you and you're trying to pack a wound and keep in mind about you, your hands do crazy things. You're nervous, you're amped up. If you drop this while you're trying to wrap the wound, it's only going to go as far as that next length of Velcro is and stop it. Whereas if you're using a traditional piece of ACE wrap, that doesn't have that Velcro and you're trying to wrap and you get the explosion. Now you're sitting here trying to wrap your wound while someone's bleeding out with this big mess pile there. So those are the reasons I love uh, the Olay's bandage from TACMED Solutions. Go and check them out if you're going to look into compression bandages. Again, to sum it up, tourniquets like in the last video go on extremities like arms and legs to stop severe arterial bleeding. A tourniquet is compressing circumferentially all the way around that wound to stop the bleeding. If you have a wound somewhere in a pocket like your armpit or your groin where you can't get a tourniquet, go into your pressure bandage, 
which is either your lace bandages, the one-stop shop, gauze, A-strap, get pressure in there, or the separate gauze, like traditional gauze, or your clotting gauze, get the wound packed, fill the wound cavity, maintain pressure the whole time, wrap with your ace wrap, and go from there. That's all I have for you today, guys. Um, thanks for watching. Remember to like and follow on social media if my content is bringing value to you. Also, if you haven't checked out my website yet, survivefirstcontact.com, you can go there for free abbreviated survival and trauma medical guides where I talk more in depth about tourniquets and pressure bandages. Um, until next time, guys, cheers and stay safe out there. Have a good one.